All right, this is class seven of my arithmetic course. Today we're gonna to be dividing whole numbers. And uh, in class eight, we're gonna continue on with this concept. So this is dividing whole numbers, part one. All right, now if you're watching this video, that means you finished the homework from class six. Remember, you can't continue on to this class unless you finish, finish the homework from the last class. Also, your homework should be uh, orderly. It should look like exactly what you see here. You should have a title. You should have your name, date, the course. You should have every problem, every problem numbered and also circled. And uh, also, I haven't mentioned that uh, obviously you need to write your equal signs. A lot of students will just write the answer here and then they'll just keep writing answers right next to the original problem. Uh, that's not proper math language. You have to write your equal sign every time, just like you see me. Uh, the reason that I have to write an equal sign is because I'm trying to communicate with, math with other mathematicians like yourself. And if I just write the number right next to the original problem, then I'm not uh, communicating properly. It's like saying, I go store, get celery. Well, that's not a complete sentence. You have to say, 12 divided by 4 is whatever it is. That's a complete sentence. If you say 12 divided by 4 and then put the number there, it's like saying, I go store celery. Okay, I go store celery doesn't make any sense. You have to say, I'm going to the store to get some celery, or else people are going to look at you weird, right? Uh, if you haven't finished the uh, homework and if you haven't completed it uh, correctly and completely, then you're in the wrong place. Go back and do the homework from class 6. That said, let's get into it. Problem number one, 12 divided by 4. So what this means is we're going to take 12 and divide it into four equal parts, and we're going to figure out how big each part is. So in order to do this, you're going to use the commutative rule of multiplication. And so it's very simple. You're going to ask yourself, how many times do you add 4 to get to 12? So 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. That's three times. Very simple. Number two, 20 divided by five. How many times do you add five to get to 20? You add it four times. So the answer is four. All right, so let's take this example, number one, and let's put it on uh, some geometry and see uh, if we can explain what's going on here. Um, so you have 12, 12 parts, and you wanna divide those 12 parts into four equal parts. So you have one part, you have two parts. Let me color that in better. Two parts, three parts, and four parts. So again, one, two, three, four. Four parts we, did, we divided it into. four parts. And the number of parts, or the, the size of each part, was three. Okay, because we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, so on and so forth. All right. So, again, you're at, you're at, for number three, you're asking yourself, how many times do you add six to get to 18? So, pause the video. Try this one and see what you can do, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. 18 divided by 6. 6 plus 6 is 12, plus another 6 is 18, so that's 3 times. 6 divided by 2. Uh, pause the video, see what you can do, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. 6 divided by 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus another 2 is 6. So 2 goes in 3 times. All right, so we say uh, 2 goes in, yeah, 2 goes into 6 3 times. When we say go into, we just mean we're adding 2 to 2 a bunch of times to see how many times it goes into 6. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, wait a second, we're dividing... Take the first problem. You're saying we're dividing 12 into four equal parts. So why are we asking how many times four goes into 12? What does that have to do with division? If you think about it, that, 
seeing how many times 4 goes into 12, that doesn't seem to really have anything to do with breaking it up into four equal parts. So how do we explain this? Well, again, using number 1 as an example, what it's asking is, how many times do you add 4 to get to 12? Well, if you change that into a multiplication problem, what it's really asking is, 4 times what number is equal to 12? Again, multiplication is just a more uh, complicated version of addition. You're adding 4 plus 4 plus 4. How many times? 4 times what number equals 12? Well, remember your commutative rule of multiplication. A times B is the same thing as B times A. And we learned that based on the geometric argument. Remember, we had those squares. And we were, uh, we were finding the area using length times width and width times length to get the same thing. So A times B is the same thing as B times A. All right? So now we go back to this problem again. How many times does 4 go into 12? That's 4 times what number equals 12? So we can use the commutative rule of multiplication, and we can switch this around and say, what number times 4 equals 12? So with this version of the commutative rule of multiplication, and by the way, you don't have to know any of this stuff. You do have to know the, the, the uh, commutative rule of multiplication but uh, you don't have to think about this when you're actually doing the division problems. When you, when you do word problems, you may have to consider this a little bit. But when you're doing these problems, just figure out how many times 4 goes into 12 or how many times 5 goes into 20. That's all you have to think about. So, I'm not, so don't be intimidated by this. Um, I'm just showing you this so you can see uh, the logic behind this. Again, division is um, more complicated than all the, the three operations that we've learned so far. So it shouldn't be a surprise to you that this is getting a little bit more complicated here. So 4 times what number equals 12 is the same as what number times 4 equals 12. So when you're asking 4 times what number is 12, you're asking how many times do you add 4 to get to 12. But when you reverse the problem, you're asking what number added up, what number added up 4 times equals 12. Now you can see that that number, whatever that number is, that's, a f that's uh, how big each number is, so that when you add it four times, you get 12. If there's a number that you add four times to get 12, how big is that number? And that goes here. Let me get rid of all this highlighting. So that number is how big the number is, such that when you add it, it gets to 12. And we found that that number is 3. If you add 3 four times, you get 12. So 3 is one-fourth of 12. If you divide 12 into four parts, the size of each part is 3. Because 3 added up four times is 12. 3 added up four times is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. So that's why this concept works. We're trying to see how many times 4 goes into 12. All right. So let's get rid of that stuff. So as you can see, the operation of division is um, more difficult than the three previous operations that we learned. Again, addition is pretty obvious. Multiplication is fairly obvious. Uh, subtraction, fairly obvious. Division, this stuff is not obvious. So we're, we're getting into more complicated uh, operations here. So again, I'm going to say that again. How many times is 4 going to 12? So 4 times what equals 12? Flip that to what times 4 equals 12? And it's 3. So this is a good thing to keep in mind when you're doing division problems. And you start to uh, hesitate because, especially in word problems, if you start to hesitate and you're not really sure what's going on, then using the commutative rule of multiplication will help you understand. Now, to be honest with you, most students, they, they really don't have a clue that they're using the commutative rule of multiplication. They may not remember the commutative rule of multiplication. 
uh, they may not they may not understand that they're using that rule when they when they do division, and uh, most teachers don't think about it either. So. Uh, if you're a little confused by this, you don't have to worry about it. Again, all, at least you don't have to worry about it now. All you have to know is you're figuring out how many times 4 goes into 12. So the division is pretty easy, but understanding uh, the logic behind the division, that takes a little more work. So the whole point of this is I recommend to you to think about the commutative role of multiplication, and then that'll answer all your questions. But please don't be intimidated by this. Because like I said, most students and most teachers don't really uh, understand this uh, as well as they should, to be honest with you. So if you're even understanding this a little bit, you're way ahead of the game. And uh, like I said, for now, don't, don't think about that. Don't think about the commutative rule of multiplication. For now, just figure out how many times 12 goes into, excuse me, how many times 4 goes into 12, how many times does 5 go into 20, and that's how we're going to solve these problems. But then when we get to the word problems, you might want to start thinking about the commutative rule of multiplication because it might be necessary to understand what's really going on. And we'll, you'll have a chance to do that as we uh, move along in this class. All right, number five, four divided by one. How many times does one go into four? Well, it goes four times. Now that's an interesting result. Four divided by one is just equal to the original number, 4. It turns out that's the same for every single number. Whenever you divide by 1, you just get the original number. 7 divided by 1 is 7. 3 divided by 1 is 3. And so on and so forth. Now if you flip uh, the order of the numbers, uh, you're going to get a fraction. 1 divided by 4 is 1 fourth because one, uh, 4 doesn't go into 1. Only 1 fourth of 4 goes into 1. So it would be a fraction, but you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, fractions now. We're going to learn those later, so you don't have to worry about this particular problem. But that, but you do need to remember that uh, any number divided by one is just the the original number. All right, number nine, five divided by zero. How many times does zero add up to equal five? 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. How, how many times do we add up 0 to get to 5? Well, it's never going to happen. So if, when you divide any number by 0, the result is what we call undefined. All that means is we don't know the answer. We don't know what it means. We just know it doesn't really give us any information. So you write undefined, and you can rectangle it. All right, or you can abbreviate undefined with UND. Mathematicians and teachers, they know exactly what that means, UND. Any number divided by zero is just undefined. All right, again, because how many times does zero go into three? Well, it goes in a billion times, a zillion times. Another way to, uh, to write this, some people like to say infinity because zero adds up uh, infinity, infinity times. Well, it doesn't really add up to anything, so probably the best answer is just undefined because it, infinity is not really a, a definable number. All right, what about when you divide zero by another number? Well, how many times does two add up to go into zero? Well, this is actually a, de a number. This is actually a defined number. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, it's going to probably probably going to be undefined again, right? Well, no. I mean, two. Keep in mind, zero is a number. Infinity is not a number, but zero is a number. How many times does two go into zero? Well, zero times. So zero divided by any number is just going to be zero. All right. Now let's go down to number 15. 72 divided by 8. How many times do we add 8 to go into 72? Well... That's a big number. 72 is a big number. So how are we going to do this? Um, well, you could add 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8. 8 plus 8 is 16, plus another 8 is 24. But that's, that's going to take a while. So how do we do this? Well, you know the answer to that. Multiplication facts. 
All right, again, if you haven't learned your multiplication facts, then uh, you're going to have a lot of trouble in this class. You probably figured out in the last class, class uh, 6, or whatever class number that was, that if you didn't know your multiplication tables, it was getting pretty difficult. Well, in this class, it's going to be even more difficult. Remember, it's not hard to, to memorize those multiplication facts. You just need to concentrate for about three or four hours, or maybe a day, or maybe two at the most, but that's it. You cannot continue in this class unless you memorize your multiplication facts. Uh, there's no way around it. That Memorizing multiplication facts is the hardest part of this course. Actually, it's not the hardest part of this course. It's the hardest part of the course for me because I have to work really hard to get you to, to memorize your multiplication facts. Kids just don't want to do it. Nobody wants to do it. Adult, adults don't want to do it. So that's the hardest part of the course for me is because I have to uh, try to uh, convince people to do something they really don't want to do. But anyway, number 15, if you did memorize your multiplication facts, I apologize for, for this lecture, but... You know, I, I only do it because there are so many kids that just refuse to memorize the, the multiplication facts. All right, so 72 divided by 8. Well, how many times does 8 go into 72? How many times do you add 8 to what equals 72? Well, I, I know that because I know 8 times 9 is 72. What that means is that 8 goes into 72 9 times. Well, how do I know that? Again, multiplication facts. I know 8 times 9 is 72, which is the same thing as saying... 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8, how many times goes into 72? 56 divided by 7 is 8, because I know 7 times 8 is 56. Now, this, this brings us to an important conclusion. Division is the opposite of multiplication, and multiplication is the opposite of division. So in order to figure out a division problem, I needed multiplication. All right? And we're going to jump down to 28 real quick, just so I can demonstrate a point here. How many times does 7 go into 58? Well, I know 7 times 8. We just, we just figured out 7 times 8 is 56, right? So I know 7 times 8 is 56, and 7 times 9 is 63. But 56 is right below 58, and 50, uh, 63 is above 58. So in this problem, we're going to have something called a remainder. 7 goes in 8 times. And if you add up eight, if you add up seven eight times, it equals fifty six, and you have a remainder of two. So here's the point that I want to make before we go on to the rest of the problems. And I don't mean to keep stopping like this, but uh, I'm just trying to explain a few things before we really get into all the rest of these problems. For division, or excuse me, for 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 subtraction, we had to know addition in order to figure out subtraction. In order to figure out multiplication, we needed addition. And now that we're going on to division, we need to know addi addition, multiplication, and because we're using remainders now, I had to figure out 58 minus 56 to figure out the remainder, so now we're using subtraction. So do you see how math in, in this case, uh, or this is an example where math builds on itself? In order to do division, you have to know addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So that's why division is a more is more a more complicated operation because now you have to know all three of the previous operations to do division. So a lot of times when I ask uh, kids what type of what 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 operation is required to do this problem addition subtraction multiplication or division, oftentimes when it's a division problem they'll say addition because you're trying to see how many times a number adds up to another number, or if there's a remainder. If they're, if they're thinking about the remainder part of the algorithm, then they're thinking, well, you use subtraction. It's a subtraction problem. Or if they're thinking about how many times another, a number goes in and they're trying to use a, the faster method for addition, multiplication, they think, oh, it's a multiplication problem. Well, they're, actually, they're all right. Division has addition, multiplication, and subtraction in it, which means that division is a more difficult problem to recognize as far as figuring out what operation you're going to use. Anyway... On to the next problem. 46 divided by or 42 divided by 6. How many times does 6 add up to itself to get to 42? If you know your math facts, this is going to be easy. 6 times what number equals 42? Pause the video, see what you can do, and when you come back, we'll do it together. Go ahead and try uh, 18, 19, 20. 
actually go all the way up to uh, 24. Go all the way up to 24, and, and I'll tell you something. You better know your multiplication facts. 6 times what number equals, equals 42? And that's the same for all those problems. Do 17 to 24. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, number 17, 42 divided by 6. I know 6 goes in 7 times because I know my multiplication facts. 81 divided by 9. 9 times 9 is 81. I figured that out pretty quickly because I knew my multiplication facts. 63 divided by 9. How many times is 9 going to 63? Well, I know 9 times 7 is 63. In other words, 9 plus 9 plus 9 7 times is 63. How did I get that so quickly? Well, I know my multiplication facts. Do you know your multiplication facts? Number 20, 30 divided by 6 is 5. 49 divided by 7 is 7. 45 divided by 5. How many times is 5 going to 45? Well, I know 5 times 9 is 45. 36 divided by 9 is 4 because I know 9 times 4 is 36. I know my multiplication facts. 48 divided by 6 is 8. And there you go. Um, checking all those answers to make sure I didn't make some ridiculous mistake. All right. Number 25. So the reason we stopped at 24 is because uh, 25, we're going to use our tens. 9 times what number is 90? Well, remember, you, you, you learned your tens. You didn't have to memorize your tens because we know that, that a number times 10, uh, you just add a 0. Whenever you're multiplying a number by 10, you add a 0. So 9 times 10 is 90 because all we're doing here is we're just adding a 0. So if you just want to add a 0 to 9, you got to multiply by 10. So 9 times 10 is 90. How many times is 9 going to 90? 10 times. All right. Uh, number 27, that's the same situation. So pause the video, see what you can do with 20, 27. We'll, we'll come back to 26. All right, we're back. Uh, 40 divided by 4. Again, if you 4 times what number equals 40? That's what we're asking here. So we just added a 0, which means you just multiply 4 times 10. It's the same principle. You're just using 10. 70 divided by 10. Let's do 26. 70 divided by 10. You can figure that out yourself. Go ahead and figure that one out. 70 divided by 10. 10 plus 10 plus 10 is, is 7 times. So that one was a little backwards because we're dividing by 10 instead of dividing by the original number. The answer to these two problems was 10. And the answer to this problem was uh, the actual number. But it's just the commutative, commutative rule of multiplication. It's all the same principle. All right, number 28. 29, now, these are the remainder problems. Now, remember, in division, you sometimes have remainders. Uh, 58 divided by 7. 7 went in 8 times, but eight, 7 times 8 was 56. We had 2 left over because we had 58. 58 minus 56 is 2, so we write, we write R2, remainder 2. All right, 29 divided by 6. Well, let's use our multiplication facts. How close can we get to 29? Because there's going to be a remainder on these problems. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 5. 6 times 4 is 24. Right. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 5 is 30. We can't go above, right? We can't, we can't, a 6 can't go in more times than, uh, than the actual uh, number. So 6 times 4 is 24. That's, that's as high as we can get. So 6 times 4. And 6 times 4 is 24. What is the remainder? What's left over? Well, 29 minus 24 is 5. So we write R5, remainder 5. And don't forget to rectangle your answers. Every single answer must be rectangled. All right. So, again, for number 29, you're trying to figure out uh, how many times 9 goes into 68 and how many times 5 goes into 39. And there's going to be a little bit left over. So use subtraction to find the remainder. Pause the video, try these problems, and when, we, uh, when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, number 29, 
9 times 3 is 27, not big enough. 9 times 5 is 45, still not big enough. 9 times 6 is 54, still not big enough. 9 times 7 is 63, 9 times that might be the number. Let's see if we can do one more. 9 times 8 is 72, whoops, we went over. We went over 68. 72 is too big, so it must be 9 times 7. 9 times 7 is 63, so we put the 7. 9 times 7 is 63. But 63 is not quite up to 68, so how much do we have left over? 9 times 7 is 63. We want 68, so 68 minus 63 is 5. Remainder, 5. And hopefully, hopefully you rectangled your answers. If you didn't rectangle your answer, you didn't do it correctly. All right. And 39 divided by 5. Uh, 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 7. I'm just using, uh, choosing random numbers random numbers. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times 8 is 40. That's too much, so it must be 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times 7 is 35. What's left over? 39 minus 35 is 4. Remainder 4. So those are problems where you have a remainder. So when we go on here, we're going we're gonna to have some more problems with remainders, and you'll see, uh, you'll see what happens. All right, we're going to go on to number 30. 876 divided by 3. All right. Now, we don't have any multiplication facts that give us a product that's anywhere close to 873, 876. For example, we did, uh, we did 72 divided by 9, problems like that. We know 9 times 8 is 72, so that's easy. 72 is a product that we remembered in the, in the class where we went over multiplication facts. But 876, that's way too big. So again, we have to, we have to add 3, 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, a bunch of times to get to 876. But obviously, uh, we're not going to add 3 plus 3 plus 3, and that would just take too long. So we have to use multiplication, a more sophisticated, more, more powerful form of addition, along with our, our math facts, to, uh, to help us figure out the number quicker. But like I said, again, uh, our, our math facts don't go anywhere near 876. The biggest number, I believe, was 11 times 11 was 121, or 10 times 10 was 100. I can't remember if we did the 11s. Uh, so it's not, 121 is nowhere near 876. So um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use a, a an algorithm. And uh, you know we could do we could try numbers we could try three times 100, you know three plus three plus three 100 times would be 300. Then we could try well 200, three plus three plus three plus three 200 times would be 600, and that would be one way to do it. In fact, that would be the way to do it in our head, and we could just keep trying numbers and numbers, and you know, you could find the answer. I mean, you don't need me to figure out this, this problem, but uh, that would take a while. We want to figure out the fastest way to do these calculations. And uh, you know, if you went to three times three hundred or th three hundred three plus three plus three three hundred times that would be nine hundred and then try three times two hundred and fifty and then you know you get the point but we're gonna we're gonna do a faster method so uh here we go and I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna explain uh every single detail of where the algorithm comes from um you're perfect perfectly capable of understanding the out the the uh the meaning or where the algorithm came from but in my experience, students really don't want to don't want to hear about where the algorithm came from. I mean, most students really don't care. They just want to learn how to use the algorithm, and then somewhere down the road, if you if you want to go back and figure out why it works, you can do that. Now, I know a lot of people would say, "Well, that doesn't sound right. That you know, shouldn't you explain the meaning of the algorithm?" And yeah, you you should explain it in order for people to understand what they're doing. But uh, you know, believe it or not, I mean, it's even though it sounds uh counterintuitive um, a lot of
even though it sounds counterintuitive, a lot of st students, uh, in, in my experience teaching math uh, to kids, uh, generally kids just don't want to, uh, to know the meaning behind the algorithms. And I know that sounds backwards, but uh, kids generally just want to know how to use the algorithm, you know, because uh, this math is not immediately useful in the sense that they're not actually doing a problem in the real world. And because they're not doing a problem in the real world, uh, you know, their interest level is, falls to the point where they, they really just want to know how to do the algorithm and uh, just show me what to do and, and let's get it over with and let's just get it done. So that, again, that's typically how students learn math. And uh, I'm not saying that I agree with that, that system, but that's, you know, in, in, in my experience, that's, you know, the best way to do it is just show students what they need to know. And then if they want to know more, they can learn more along the road. So let's get to this. 876 divided by 3. All right, 876 is called the dividend, and the divisor is 3. The 3 is called the divisor. So you put the dividend here, you put the divisor here. All right, and this is how the algorithm works. So remember we were doing kind of cycles, 3 times 200, or 3 times 100 is 300. And then we have a remainder of 576 if you subtract. So we have to go, we have to figure out how many times 3 goes into 576. And then we tried 3 times 200. Uh, was to get there a little faster. 3 times 200 is 600, and the remainder is 276. And so we have to figure out how many times 3 goes into 276. Or we might try a bigger number. And it, it, that's kind of how the cycling works. But again, you don't have to know that. All you have to do is just follow this algorithm. So here's the algorithm. How many times does 3 go into 8? Well, it doesn't go evenly, but it does go 2 times. That's step 1 of the algorithm, or step 1 of, of the, uh, the first cycle. Remember, there, there are cycles. This, this problem is going to have 3 cycles, and every cycle has 3 steps. So step 1 of the first cycle is how many times does 3 go into 8? It goes in 2 times. Second step of the first cycle is 3 times 2 equals 6. You multiply, and you put the product right below the 8. All right? And the third step is you subtract 6 from 8. 8 minus 6 is 2. That's the first cycle. So, and you can put a subtraction sign because we're, we're subtracting. So there were three steps in that cycle. All right, and now we're going to do the cycle again, a second time, and then we're going to do it a third time. The second cycle is going to have three steps, and the third cycle is going to have three steps. Uh, but there's going to be a slight difference in the second and third cycling uh, compared to the, to the first cycle. But before we go on to the, the second cycle, there's a few things I have to mention real quick. Um, now, notice that I put the 2 right above the 8. We're trying to figure out how many times 3 goes into 8. So I put the 2 right above the 8. Make sure that your number goes right above the number that you're dividing into. All right? The second thing is when we multiply 3 times 6, the product went right below the 8, the number we were trying to divide into again. So notice that these numbers are all lined up. And then when we subtracted, we put the 2 right below those numbers. So all these numbers are lined up. you got to make sure that you line up the numbers correctly. Remember addition and subtraction. And uh, also we had to make sure we lined up numbers uh, partway through the algorithm in the, in the multiplication uh, class. So uh, again, lining up numbers is really, really important here. So uh, the second thing that we need to know is that this remainder is smaller than the divisor. 
and it, it should always be smaller than, than the divisor. That tells us we did the problem correct, or we did it correctly. Now let's see what happens if we don't do the problem correctly. Let's say that we say 3 goes into 8 one time. Okay, well, one time is not enough. It goes in more than one time, right? Again, it doesn't go in evenly, but it does go in more than one time. So now we do the second step, which is 3 times 1. Second step of the first cycle. 3 times 1 is 3. And when we subtract, we do the third step of the, of the first cycle. 8 minus 3 is 5. We know we did it incorrectly because the remainder is greater than the divisor. So just be aware of that, that the, the remainder should always be smaller. This number should always be smaller than this number. But it's not, which means that we did it incorrectly. All right. So 3 goes into 8 two times. 3 times 2 is 6, and 8 minus 6 is 2. All right. So that's the first cycle. Now, as I said, the second, third, and fourth, and every other cycle after the first cycle are slightly different because now the first step, we're not going to see how many times 3 goes into any numbers here. We're going to see how many times does 3 go into the numbers down here. All right. Now, like I said, three. Th this number, the divisor, is never going to go into your remainder if you did it correctly. So you're always going to have to bring down the number next to the first digit that we divided into. So bring down the 7. Okay, now we start the second cycle over again. So you're always going to bring down that number and then start the second cycle over again. So how many times does 3 go into 27? Again, we're figuring out how many times this number goes into the, this number down here, not over here. So how many times does 3 go into 27? Well, if you know your multiplication facts, we know it goes in three time, or excuse me, nine times because 3 times 9 is 27. In this case, it actually went in perfectly. So that was the first step. Write your number here. And the second step is go ahead and multiply these two numbers, 3 and 9. 3 times 9 is 27. And the third step is to subtract these two numbers. 27 minus 27 is 0. It was the same three steps. The only difference is instead of 3 going into these numbers, 3 went into these numbers. All right? So now we have a remainder of 0. So that's good because the remainder is smaller than our divisor. We know we, we, know we did it correctly. So now as always, we always have, or after the after the first cycle, all the other cycles, we always have to bring down this number because zero is not big enough. Three does not go into zero. All right. So bring down the six, and now, and you can leave that zero there. Technically, zero six is not really a number, but you can leave it there if you want. All right. Now, we start the third cycle. Again, do you see how the cycles are just continuing here? Every cycle has three steps, and we're just cycling, cycling, cycling. How many times does 3 go into 6? Well, 3 goes into 6 two times. That's the first step of the third cycle. Second step is we multiply 3 times that number, the number of times that 3 goes in to 6. 3 times 2 is equal to 6. 6 exactly. And we put the number down here. That was the second step. And the third step, we subtract. 6 minus 6 is 0. Now at this point, we might keep going, but we know that we're actually done because there are no numbers here. Right? So we know that we're done. And we also know that there's no remainder because the final number down here was 0. So we can write the final answer. The final answer is 292. All right. Now, bef and so, th so that's the quotient. 292 is the answer. That's the quotient. 
Now, a really important thing to understand is, do you see how I lined up these numbers? Remember I mentioned lining up the numbers? These numbers are all lined up. These numbers are all lined up. And these numbers are all lined up. If you don't line up those numbers properly, then there's going to be serious problems. Usually when students get the wrong answer is because they're not lining up the numbers, just like in uh, addition and subtraction. And remember, partway through the algorithm of multiplication, we had to, to line up the numbers when we added them correctly. And typically, again, if students get problems wrong, then that's usually what the, what the issue is going to be. The other issue that I, that I mentioned is that you might not, 3 might not go into 8 enough times. If it only goes in one time, then this the remainder is going to be bigger than your divisor, and then you know you have a problem. Your remainder is going to be bigger than your divisor. So those are typically the issues that students will, will, will run into. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, man, this stuff, this stuff looks really scary. I mean, there, there's a lot of problems, a lot, lot of numbers here, a lot of things to remember. But uh, don't be afraid. This is the first time that you've seen this stuff. And there's a reason that this is called long division. I don't know if I mentioned that. This is called long division, but I don't need to tell you why it's called long division because look at all this stuff. It's long. So this is a big, big al algorithm, and it's a lot to remember, but we're going to be doing tons of these problems, and you're going to have plenty of practice. And with repetition, you're going to start to see how this works, and as long as you line up the numbers properly and as long as you're not careless, these problems are going to be very easy. You'll see. All right, so let's go on to uh, number 31. 552 divided by 4. So we're going to do a couple more of these problems together before you uh, try one yourself. So uh, how many times is 4 going to 5? That's the first step of the cycle, the first cycle. It goes in one time. Second step, 4 times 1 is 4. Third step, 5 minus 4 is 1. That's the first cycle. Now, as, as usual, when you do the second, third, fourth, or any cycle other than the first cycle, you always bring down the next number. And again, this number should be less than the divisor. If it's not less than, you did something wrong. You always have to bring in, bring down the next number because 4 should never go into the, re the remainder because the remainder should always be smaller than the divisor. All right, so now we start the second cycle. How many times is 4 going to 15? Well, I know my multiplication fact, so I know 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. That's too big. Uh, if we did 4 times 2, and then 4 times 2 is is 8, the remainder would be uh, 7. 7 is bigger than 4, so that, that can't be correct. All right, so 4, so four goes in uh, more than 2 times. Let's try 4 times 3. I know that's 12, so that's the first step. 4 times 3, put your 3, or excuse me, figure out how many times 4 goes in. It goes in 3 times, that's the first step. And then 4 times 3 is the second step. And put your number down here. Remember to line everything up. I'm lining all this stuff up. And then the third step is to subtract 12 from 15. So 15 minus 12 is 3. And we're done with the second cycle. Now we go on to the third cycle. But we know that 3 is less than 4, so we, we know we did that correctly. So now we bring, uh, we, we know 4 is not going to go into 3. 4 is not going to go into 3. Therefore, we have to always bring down the next number in every cycle other, other than the first cycle. And so now we're going to do 4. How many times does 4 go into 32? That's the first step, step of the, the last cycle, the third cycle. 4 goes into 32. I know my multiplication tables, or my multiplication facts, so 4 goes into 32 eight times. 4 times 8 is 32, 
exactly. So we put 32 down here. That's the second step of the third cycle. And the last step, the third step of the, the last cycle is subtract 32 minus 32 is 0. And we know that we're done because there are no more numbers to bring down. So again, it's just cycling over and over and over again. And every cycle has three steps. So this might seem like a lot to remember, but it's not really that much because it's the same cycle over and over and over again. You just have to remember to line up your numbers, line up all these numbers properly. You have to make sure that uh, the uh, remainder, make sure that the remainders are are never bigger than the divisor, not, not never bigger than than the divisor, and uh, just remember the the first step of the of the of each cycle, the second step of each cycle, and the third step of each cycle. So the final answer is 138. 138. All right. So let's go on to the next problem. Uh, let's see here. Why don't you go ahead and try it? You can try this problem if you want to. Pause the video, see what you can do, and when you come back, uh, we'll do it together. Or since this is such a huge uh, algorithm to learn, you can uh, just work with me on this one, and then you can do the next one. 757 divided by 5. So I'm going to go a little bit faster now because I, I don't want you to think that it's going to take that long for each problem. Once you get the hang of this, it's going to go pretty quickly. So how many times does 5 go into 7? It goes 1 time. 5 times 1 is 5. 7 minus 5 is 2. That's the first cycle. Now the second cycle, you always bring down the 5. Or bring, excuse me, bring down the next number, whatever the next number is. And then how many times is 5 going to 25? That's the first step of the second cycle. Goes in 5 times. The second step of the second cycle is multiply these two numbers. 5 times 5 is 25, so this time it went in perfectly. And the third step of the second cycle is to subtract 25 from 25 is 0. We're done with the second cycle. Now on to the third cycle. Again, this, this remainder should always be smaller than the divisor, so we know we're doing it correctly. So what that, what that means is we have to bring down the next number, because 5 doesn't go into 0, right? So bringing down the 7. Now how many times does 5 go into 7? It goes in one time. We put our 1 there. That's the first step of the third cycle and the last cycle. And then 5 times 1 is 5. That's the second step of the last cycle. And then 7 minus 5 is 2. That's the third step of the last cycle. All right. So now we know that we're done because, again, there are no more numbers here to bring down. Now, this problem is different because now, look, we have a remainder. We have a remainder down here. So all that means is that the final answer is going to be 151, remainder 2. And here's how we write it. 151, remainder 2, R2. 151, R2. All right. So I'm actually glad we did that one together because uh, in that one we actually had a remainder. So I... If you tried that one yourself, uh, you may have gotten a little stuck there with the remainder. All right. Now we're going on to uh, 33. Why don't you go ahead and attempt this one yourself, and when you're done, we'll uh, do it together. Pause the video, and I'll see you when you come back. All right, 574. 574 divided by 2. How many times does 2 go into 5? It goes in 2 times. 2 times 2 is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. 
and that's the first cycle. And this number is smaller than this number, which means we did it correctly. Now we bring down the 7, and now we start the second cycle. First step, how many times does 2 go into 17? It goes in 8 times. 2 times 8 is 16, and I knew it went in 8 times because I know my multiplication facts. Uh, so the second step was multiply 2 times 8 and put it here. Now we're on the third step. 17 minus 16 is uh, 1. So now we're done with the second cycle. Again, same three steps for every cycle. See how many times a number goes in, multiply the two numbers, and then subtract the last, uh, the last two numbers at the bottom of the algorithm. All right, so we... The fact that this number is smaller than the divisor, that's a good sign. That means we did it right. We did it correctly. Now, uh, we, as, as always, 2 is obviously not going to go into 1, so we have to bring down the 4. And how many times does 2 go into 14? 2 goes into 14 uh, 7 times. And then 2 times 7 is exactly 14. 14 minus 14 is 0. So same three steps for the last cycle. All right. So there's no remainder in this problem, so our final answer is going to be 287. 287. Remember to rewrite the problem, or rewrite the answer, and then rectangle the answer. All right. So uh, pause the video, try number 34, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. 920 divided by 7. How many times does 7 go into 9? It goes in one time. That's the first step of the first cycle. 7 times 1 is 7. That's the second step. 9 minus, nine minus 7 is 2. That's the third step. Now, we, now uh, as always, we bring down the next number, bring down this 2, and we start the second cycle. How many times does 7 go into 22? It goes in 3 times, because I know my multiplication facts. And 7 times 3 is 21, so we put that down here. That's the second step. And the third step is to subtract 21 from 22. 22 minus 21 is 1. All right, and you can write this number again. Two, so two minus one is one. Two minus two is zero. But you don't have to write the zero if you don't want to. All right. So that's the end of the second cycle. Now on to the third cycle. As always, we have to bring down the next number. The fact that one is less than seven is a sign that we're doing it correctly. Bring down the next number. We know we're not done yet because we still have a number here. Again, that's the key. So bring down the 0, and now we want to figure out how many times 7 goes into 10. That's the first step of the last cycle. This is going to be the last cycle. How many times does 7 go into 10? It goes in one time. Second step, 7 times 1 is 7. And third step, 10 minus 7 is 3. All right, 10 minus 7 is 3. Uh, actually, I wrote that wrong. i got to line those up properly. All right, 10 minus 7 is 3. All right, so 131. And by the way, again, we know at this point we know we're done because there's no other numbers here. So we're done, but we have a, we have a number down there. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm going to try to rewrite that again. 10, 7, 3. So 131, and because we have a number left over down here, that's called the remainder, and we write R, R 
3. 131, remainder 3. All right, so now try 35. Pause the video, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. 654 divided by 3. All right, now this time, uh, 3 goes into 6 perfectly. It goes in 2 times. That's the first step. Second step, multiply 3 times 2 is 6. That's the second step. Third step, 6 minus 6 is 0. First cycle is done. 0 is smaller than 3, so we know we did something right. So we're ready to go on to the uh, second cycle. As always, you've got to bring down the next number before you go on to the second cycle. Now, how many times does 3 go into 5? It goes 2 times, or excuse me, 1 time. That's the first step of the second cycle. Second step, 3 times 1 is 3. Third step, 5 minus 3 is 2. We're done with the second cycle. On to the third cycle. Well, of course, before we go on to the third cycle, we have to uh, verify that 2 is less than 3. And after we verify that, we can bring down the next number course if there is no next number we don't we can stop but there's a 4 so we have to bring it down and continue with our algorithm here second step multiply 3 times or excuse me or we're on, we're on the the first step of the third cycle so how many times does 3 go into 24 it goes in 8 times exactly 3 times 8 is 24. Third step, 24 minus 24 is 0. And there's no more numbers here, so we're done. The remainder is 0, which means the final answer is just whatever this number is here, which we call the quotient, 218. All right. So... Let's see here. I was going to mention something, but I forgot what I was going to say. Um, just make sure you line up the numbers. Oh, yeah. I was going to mention, again, the, remember, I'm, I put the 8 right above the 4. I put the, uh, the 8 right above the 4, I put the 1 right above the 5. Make sure that these numbers are lined up. All these numbers have to be lined up. So on and so forth. Alright, now we're going to the, we're ready to go on to the next problem. 36. Go ahead and try that problem, see what you can do, and then when you're done, we'll do it together. Alright, we're back. 893 divided by 4. Uh, 4 goes into 8 2 times. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. Bring down the 9. 4 goes into 9 2 times. And 4 times 2 is 8. 9 minus 8 is 1. Bring down the 3. 4 goes into 13 3 times. 4 times 3 is 12. And 13 minus 12 is 1. And we know we can stop at that point because there are no more numbers here. We're going to do problems later on where there are more numbers here. But don't worry, I'm not going to bog you down with a lot of a lot of uh, cycles. It, the mo the uh, six is the most cycles that I'm gonna I'm gonna give you on these problems. So because we know that we're done, and we know that there's still a number down here, we have a remainder on this problem. So the answer is 223 remainder one. 
and that doesn't really work to make it smaller. I'll just throw it over here. All right, sorry. 37. Try 37, see what you can do, pause the video, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. 696 divided by four. Four goes into six one time. Four times one is four. Six minus four is two. And the two down here is smaller than the divisor, which means that we're on the right track. So we always have to bring down the nine, or bring down the next number. Now we start cycle two. Four goes into 29 uh, seven times. 4 times 7 is 28. 29 minus 28 is 1. We're done with the second cycle. Now on to the third cycle. Well, first of all, 1 is smaller than 4, so we know we're on the right track. And so we always have to bring down, if, if 1 is smaller than 4, then, we, then we're ready to bring down the next number. And we have to bring down the next number because 4 doesn't go into 1. So bring down the next the, the next number, and now four, how many times does four go into 16? It goes in exactly four times. Now how did I know that? Well, I know my multiplication facts. So four times four is the second step is 16, and the third step is sub subtract 16 minus 16 is zero. And we have no other numbers here, which means that we're done. And the final answer is the quotient, which is above here, which is 174. 174. All right, try number 38, see what you can do, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. 738 divided by 2. 2 goes into 7 three times. 2 times 3 is 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. Our remainder is smaller than our divisor, so that's good. So that means we have to bring down the three. As usual, now two into three, 13. Two, two, times, uh, two times six is 12. 13 minus 12 is one. And uh, we're on to the third cycle. Bring down the eight. Two goes into 18. 9 times, exactly. 2 times 9 is 18, and 18 minus 18 is 0. And we have no other numbers here to continue, so we're done, and our answer is 369. If you did that one correctly, pat yourself on the back. If you didn't do it correctly, that's fine. We're going to do a lot more of these problems. So you have plenty of uh, chances to... Uh, to get some practice. All right, 904 divided by eight. Pause the video, see what you can do. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back, 904 divided by eight. Eight goes into nine one time. Eight times one is eight. Nine minus eight is one. Bring down the zero. 8 goes into 10 one time. 1 times 8 is 8. Subtract 10 minus 8 is 2. Bring down the 4. 8 goes into 24 three times. 8 times 3 is 24. Exactly. 24 minus 24 is 0. There are no more numbers here, so we're done. Final answer is 113. Remember to write the final answer and rectangle it. If you didn't rectangle your final answer, then you did it incorrectly. If you got that one right, pat yourself on the back. If you didn't, remember, one of the reasons that you might be getting it wrong is that you're not lining up these numbers. you got to line up all these numbers. All right? Or you may just be uh, forgetting uh, the steps of the algorithm. There's a lot of steps on this, so don't be... Uh, don't, don't worry if you're forgetting the steps. you gotta, you got to do a number of these problems, a lot of these problems, before it starts to sink in. That's okay. All right, 630 divided by 5. Pause the video, see what you can do. And when you come back, we'll do it together. 
All right, we're back. Five goes into six one time. One times five is five. Six minus five is one. And uh, bring down the three. Five goes into 13. Two times, two times five is 10. 13 minus 10 is three. Um, bring down the zero. Five goes into 30, exactly six times. Six times five is 30. 30 minus 30 is zero. So we don't have any more numbers here. No more numbers here, so we know that we're done, and 126 is the answer. So 126, rectangle. Try 41, and when you're done, we'll do it together. All right, we're back, 604 <clears throat> divided by 4. <clears throat> Step 1, how many times is 4 going to 6? One time. Step 2, 4 times 1. Step 3, 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 is smaller than 4, so that's, that's a good thing. Bring down the 0. Step 1, how many times is 4 going to 20? Five times. Step two, four times five is 20. Step three, subtract. And uh, zero is less than our divisor, so we know we're on the right track. Bring down the next number. <clears throat> Step one, four goes into four one time. <clears throat> Step two, four times one is four. Step three, four minus four is zero. All right, and there are no more numbers here, which means that we're done, and the answer is 151. 151. All right, now on 42, something different is going to happen. <clears throat> so let's do number 42 together. 652 divided by 6. How many times is 6 going to 6? It goes one time. 6 times 1 is 6, so put the 6 under here. 6 minus 6 is 0. And so we're done with cycle 1. Now the 0 is smaller than the divisor, so we know that we're on the right track. And so we're ready to bring down the next number as usual. We bring down the next number and now we're ready to go on to cycle two, the second cycle. But here's where things get a little different. Six does not go into five. So after we subtracted and after we brought down the five, the divisor still doesn't go in. So because the divisor still doesn't go in, what we do is we say, 6 does not go into 5, so 6 goes into 5 0 times, and we put a 0 above, the, above these numbers. Remember, always line up these numbers. So that was what was different about this problem, is that after we brought down the number, the divisor still didn't go into it, so we had to put a 0, because 6 went into 5 0 times. All right, so now, because 6 doesn't go into 5, because it goes in 0 times, we have to bring down another number. So we actually didn't, we actually didn't do a, a, a second cycle. We're actually moving on to uh, the third cycle, or we can just say that this is the second and last cycle. So bring down the 2. So 6 didn't go into 5 alone, but now because we brought down the 2, 6 is going to go into 52. So now I try to remember my multiplication facts. 6 times 5 is 30, not big enough. We need 52. 6 times 7 is 42. We're getting closer. 6 times 8 is 48. And that's pretty close. 6 times 9 is 54. That's too much. Now again, uh, 
if you choose, let's say you, cho you chose a 6 times 7. So we put a 7, 6 times 7 is 42. When you subtract, you get a 10, but you know that's wrong because 10 is bigger than the divisor. I'm just reminding you of that. So if the, if the remainder is bigger than the divisor, you know you did it incorrectly. So it's not going to be 7, it's going to be 8. 6 times 8 is 48. That's much, clo much closer to 52. And then you subtract. And again, the, the uh, subtraction in the, in the, in the uh, long division algorithm is usually going to be pretty easy. Now, you, we can't subtract 8 from 2, so we'd have to borrow from 5, make it a 4, and then add 10 to 2, so it becomes 12. 12 minus 8 is 4, and then 4 minus 4 is 0. But all that stuff is really unnecessary. Like I said, the subtraction in the division algorithms is going to be pretty easy, so you can do 52 minus 48 in your head. You know, you don't have to do all that, all that stuff there, but you can if you want to. So 52 minus 48 is 4, and it looks like uh, there's no more problems here, or no more uh, numbers here, which means that we're done. So the answer is 108 remainder 4 because there's a number left over here. Alright. So that same type of thing is going to happen on 43. Yeah, 43 also, so let's do 43 together. 836 divided by 4. 4 goes into 8 2 times. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. Bring down the 3. After we bring down the 3, 4 still does not go in. It doesn't go into 3. So we have to put a 0. 4 goes into 3 0 times. So now, because 4 didn't go into 3, we have to bring down another number, 6. Now 4 goes into 36. I know my multiplication fact, so I know it goes in exactly 9 times. 4 times 9 is 36. 36 minus 36 is 0. And there are no more numbers here. Excuse me, there are no, no more numbers here. So we know that we're done. The answer is 209. All right. Now 44 is going to be the same type of problem, but I think there's going to be uh, I think there's going to be two zeros. You'll you'll see what happens. So before you go on to do these problems yourself, let's do one more of these. 900 divided by 3. 3 goes into 9 three times because 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 9 is 0. Now we're going to bring we're going to bring down the 0. But after we bring down the 0, 3 still does not go into these numbers. So 3 goes into 0, 0 times. But I should, I should move this over. I should write these zeros smaller. You're going to line them up. Make sure you line them up correctly. You've got all these lined up, right? So now I'm, I'm bringing down... I've got one more 0. I'm not done yet because I've got one more 0. So 3 does not go into 0, so we write a 0, and then we bring down the last number, and 3 still does not go in. So because it still doesn't go in after you brought down the, la the next number, we put another 0. And our remainders are, are obviously 0, and there are no more numbers here, so we're done. The answer is 300. 300. All right, so remember, if you bring down a number and the divisor the divisor still doesn't go in after you bring down the number, then you put a 0 up here. Now you try number 45. You're going to encounter those same types of problems in 45, 46, and I believe 47. All right, pause the video, see what you can do, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. 525 divided by 5. 5 goes into 5 one time. 1 times 5 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. Bring down the number up. 5 doesn't go into 2, so we have to put a 0. And uh, so now we have to bring... 5 didn't go into 2, so we have to bring down another number. 
Now we see if 5 goes into 25, 5 goes into 25 5 times. So now 5 times 5 is exactly 25. 25 minus 25 is 0. So there are no more numbers here. So we're done. 105 is the answer because the remainder is 0, so we don't have any remainder. All right. Try number 46. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. 721 divided by 7. 7 goes into 7 one time. 1 times 7 is 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. Bring down the 2. After you bring down the 2, 7 still doesn't go in. So 7 goes into 2 0 times. So you put 0. Then you have to bring down another number because it didn't go into 2. So now 7 goes into 21 3 times. 7 times 3 is 21. 21 minus 21 is 0. Try number 47, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, 800 divided by 4. 4 goes into 8 2 times. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. Bring down 0. 4 still doesn't go into 0, so you put a 0. Bring down, it didn't go into 0, so you have to bring down another number. And after you bring down the last number, 4 still doesn't go in, so you have to put another 0. And at that point, you're done because there's no more numbers. There's no more numbers here, right? All right, so 200 is the uh, final answer for that one because there, there was no remainder. All right. Now we're on to 48. So these problems are going to be pretty much uh, the same. The only difference is we have slightly bigger numbers, so you're going to get more practice here. I think this problem is going to have uh, five cycles, whereas the, all the other problems we did before only had three cycles, When uh, the long division problems that we did. And again, why is this called long division? It's called long division because it's just long. It, just, uh, it goes on all the way down the page. 75,288 divided by 6. How many times does 6 go into 7? It goes 1 time. 1 times 6 is 7. 7 minus 6 is 1. Bring down the 5. 6, six goes into 15. Uh, 2 times. So you put your 2 above the 5. 6 times 2 is 12. Put the 12 down here. 15 minus 12 is 3. Uh, as usual, you always got to bring down the next number. 6 goes into 32 5 times because I know by my multiplication facts, 6 times 5 is 30, write the 30 down here. 6 times 5 is 30, right? that's the second step of the cycle. 32 minus, or thir yeah, 32 minus 30 is the third step of the cycle. 32 minus 30 is 2. And uh, so now, as always, we have to bring down the next number. How many times is 6 going to 28? It goes uh, 4 times. Now remember to line up these numbers, line up these numbers properly. 6 times 4 is the second step. 6 times 4, I should use my highlighter here. 6 times 4 is 24. And third step, 28 minus 24 is 4. And you might think, well, we've we got to be done by now, right? Well. We still have an 8 here, so we got to keep going. As long as there are more numbers here, we got to keep going. We already brought down one 8, right? And let's just go back over this and, and do some highlighting because I want to make sure all my numbers are lined up. These numbers are lined up. These numbers are lined up. These numbers are lined up. And these numbers are lined up. You see the potential for making mistakes here if you don't line those numbers up? I've made mistakes myself many times where I forgot which number is coming down because I didn't line the numbers up correctly. All right, so now we have one more 8, so we got to bring this 8 all the way down. We already brought that 8 down, right? So don't be fooled because of these two 8s. This 8 was just the first 8. We still have one more 8 to bring down. All right, so bring down this, this 8 all the way down here. As usual, we got to bring down another number. 6 goes into 48 8 times. Put your 8 above that 8 there. And 6 times 8 
is 48 exactly. And 48 minus 48 is 0. All right. Let's try to uh, make these numbers a little smaller. Actually, I shouldn't do that because we're supposed to be lining them up. Oh, well. So the final answer, we got a really big quotient this time. Remember, this number is called the quotient. 12,548. And the remainder is 0, so we don't have to write a remainder. All right. So as you can see, it's the same uh, three-step cycle every time. And I think we did five cycles that time. And uh, every cycle had three steps. See how many times the number goes in? Multiply the numbers, subtract. See how many times the number goes in? Multiply the numbers, subtract. See how many times the number goes in? Multiply the numbers, subtract. There's just a few other things uh, to remember, but that's generally what you're doing every time. So again, the, the, this algorithm, it comes from just the fact that, for example, on the next problem, you're trying to see how many times 4 adds up to equal 9,431. So 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 would take a long time, right? So you're going to do 4 times 10, 4 times 20, 4 times 200. You're going to test numbers. But four times four times a thousand, for example, would be four thousand. We need nine thousand four hundred thirty-one, so it's not big enough. So we have to see how many times four times a thousand is four thousand. But we have if we subtract four thousand from nine thousand four hundred thirty-one, we get uh, I think five thousand four hundred thirty-one. So we have more. We have a remainder. We have to keep going. So then we see how many times four goes into five thousand four hundred thirty-one, and it just cycles and cycles. So that's all we're doing here. That's where this algorithm comes from. But uh, you don't have to do it that way because that way you're just kind of using random numbers. Okay, the algorithm that we're using is uh, very efficient. It's, uh, it's designed so that you can uh, figure out the answer as quickly as possible. Again, that's what math is all about. It's using algorithms to, uh, to figure out uh, the number we want uh, very quickly. Um, all right, number 49, try that, try that problem, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back, 9,431 divided by 4. 4 goes into 9 two times. 4 times 2 is 8. 9 minus 8 is 1. And as always, bring down the next number. 4 goes into 14. Two, uh, two, uh, that'd be uh, three times, right? Four times three is twelve. Fourteen minus two, fourteen minus twelve is two. Bring down the next number. Four. How many times is four going to twenty-three? It goes five times. Four times five is twenty. Twenty-three minus twenty is three. But don't stop. We still have one more number to bring down. Bring down the one. Remember, we got to keep going. We got to. You got to use all these numbers. If you don't use all the numbers, then you're not done, and you'll get the problem wrong. How many times does four go into thirty-one? Four times seven, I know, is twenty-eight. That's pretty close. That's got to be it. Four times seven is twenty-eight. Make sure that uh, the remainder. So thirty-one minus twenty-eight. Again, you can borrow from the 3 and make it a 2, add the 1 to so it becomes 11. 11 minus 8 is 3, but that's really not necessary. This problem is too easy. 31 minus 28 is just too easy. It's 3. So remember, if the remainder is bigger than the divisor, you know you did it incorrectly. The remainder is smaller, so we, we're on the right track. And uh, we have no, no more numbers here. We brought down the 1. We brought down the uh, 3 and the 4, and so on and so forth. So there are no more numbers, so we're done. Answer is 2,357, remainder 
three because the last number was a three. 2,357, remainder three. You should probably put a space between this area, but I'm kind of running out of room here. Try the next problem, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. 71,806 divided by 7. 7 goes into 7 one time. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. Bring down the 1. Uh-oh. 7 doesn't go into 1. So after we brought down the 1, 7 still didn't go in, which means 7 goes into 1 0 times. We have to write the 0 up there. Now, we, now because 7 didn't go into 1, we have to bring down a number. We bring down the 8. How many times does 7 go into 18? It goes in 2 times because I know my multiplication fact. 7 times 2 is 14. 18 minus 14 is 4. And as always, bring down the next number. 7 goes into 40 uh, 5 times. Well, how do I know that? Because I know my multiplication facts. 40 minus 35 is 5. Again, you can borrow and all that type of stuff, but you don't need to do that. 40 minus 35, you can do it in your head. All right, so now we bring down the next number, as always. Bring down the 6. And 7 goes into 56 8 times. 7 times 8 is exactly 56. 56 minus 56 is 0. And the 6 was the last number, right? Which means that uh, there are no more numbers over here, so we're done. And the remainder is 0, so we don't have to write our R for remainder. So final answer is this number here. 10,258. No remainder. All right, let's go on to the next problem. Number 51. Lindsay's husband gave her a box of chocolates. The box contains 24 chocolates. Lindsay wants to share the chocolates equally with her eight co-workers. How many chocolates will each of her co-workers get? Write a division expression to notate this problem. All right. So we're going to take the 24 chocolates and we're going to divide those chocolates into eight equal parts. So 24 divided by 8. All right. Now I know my multiplication facts. So I know 8 times 3 is 24. So how many chocolates will each of her coworkers get? Three chocolates. But this is a word problem. So our final answer should be All right, and write a division expression to notate this problem. We just did that. And there you go. All right, so again, how many times is 8 going to 24? Well, 8 goes in three times. But if we uh, reverse this side of the equation with the commutative rule of multiplication, remember we learned that, it becomes 3 times 8 is equal to 24. So here we're adding 8 3 times. 8 plus 8 plus 8. But down here, we're adding 3 8 times. And we're getting the same number. Again, that's the uh, commutative rule. of uh, multiplication, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So because we can use the commutative rule of multiplication, we simply ask ourselves how many times is 8 going to 24, and that gives us uh, the size of each of 8 parts. So again, you don't really have to know that. You don't really have to think about the, the uh, commutative rule of multiplication. All you have to do is just take 
24 and divide by 8. All right. 52. Nick has 56 baseball cards. He wants to put the cards in a book. Each page of the book can fit six cards. How many pages will he fill completely? How many cards will be on the last page? Write an expression to notate this problem. All right, so the reason that it's asking how many pages will be on the last, or how many cards will be on the last page is because there's going to be a remainder. All right, he has 56 baseball cards. He wants to put the cards, uh, he can fit six cards on each page. So six cards for one page. He has 56 baseball cards. So think about that. Think about if you have that problem. Let's say you collect baseball cards. You have 56 baseball cards, and you can fit six cards on each page. So how many pages can he fill completely? Again, he has 56 baseball cards. He can fit six baseball cards on each page. How many pages can he fill completely? Well, that's not that hard. Uh, you can figure that out just by adding 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, but we're not going to do that because that would take forever. Instead, we're going to use our multiplication tables. Instead of adding 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, well, first of all, let's write the expression. We're trying to take 56 and divide it by 6. There's going to be a remainder. So instead of saying 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, I can just say, okay, 6 times 5 is 30, not big enough. 6 times 7 is 42, not big enough. 6 times 8 is 48, not big enough. Getting there, though, 6 times 9 is 54. I think that's the closest we're going to get. 6 times 10 is 60. That's too big. So, 9. But there's a, there's a remainder, because 9 times 6 is 54. All right? So... Now we have to subtract. 56 minus 54 is 2, so the remainder is 2. So 9 goes into 56, or 6 goes into 56 9 times, so you can fill 9 pages, but there's going to be 2 cards left over. All right? So write, a, write an expression to notate this problem. We just did that. That's part of our answer. Uh, he can he can fill uh, nine pages uh, and the last page will have two cards because there was a remainder of two. The last page will have two cards. All right, on to the next problem. I think that was it for that one. Four laps on a racetrack is 520 miles. What is the distance around the racetrack? Four laps on a racetrack is 520 miles. What is the distance around the racetrack? All right, so we'll, this is kind of a challenge problem because they're asking, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to figure out what exactly they are, they are asking. What do they mean? What is the distance around the racetrack? Well, the distance around the racetrack is just one lap. Uh, but they're giving us the distance for four laps. So we have to take the 520 miles and divide it by, divide it by four. So this problem is a little confusing. But... Uh, yeah, you're just going to have to get used to that because, uh, trust me, I've I've been teaching math for a long time, and uh, the, uh, the, the people that write math problems, they really like to uh, make things ambiguous and, and difficult to understand, so you're going to have to get used to that. It's not fair, but you're going to have to get used to it. All right, so 520 miles is four laps. We want the distance for one lap, so we have to take 520 and we have to divide it by four. Now this is this takes a, a sophisticate. This takes the long division algorithm because we four times uh, some number four times eleven is the biggest number we know. That's forty four. Not even close. So here we go. How many times is four going to five? It goes in one time. That's for step one. Step two. Four times one is four. Step three. Five minus four is one. 
All right, now our remainder is less than our divisor, which is a good sign. So now, as usual, we bring down the two, and now we start the entire process over again. Step one, four goes into 12, three times. Step two, four times three is 12. Step three, 12 minus 12 is zero. All right, so our remainder is smaller than our divisor, so we know we're on the right track. Nothing looks wrong so far. But the problem is we have another zero, so we're not done yet. We have to do another cycle. So now, as usual, bring down the, z the next number, zero. Now, how many times? Now we start the uh, third cycle. How many times is four going to zero? Well, that's easy. It doesn't go at all. So you just put a zero, and we're done. So the distance around the track, in other words, the distance for one lap, is 130 miles. All right. Technically, you should probably be writing in complete sentences, but I'm not going to waste your time making you do that. All right, on to the next problem. Now, this is a challenge problem. In Bible times, the firstborn child will get twice as much inheritance as his siblings. If a father distributes 7,245 silver coins to his six children, how many coins would the firstborn get? How many coins would each of the other children get? All right. So you can try this problem if you want. Uh, it, is, it is a challenge problem. There's a slight twist to it. Or we can do it together. So uh, here we go. So five of the children, let's say that each portion, we'll call it X. So five children will each get X. One, two, three, four, five. But the sixth child, he'll get twice as much. All right? So the key to understanding this problem is to know that each one of these parts is the same size. Right? So all these children with the yellow uh, highlighter, they, they get X. The first one gets X, the second one gets X, the third one gets X. But the firstborn, he gets two times X. Right? So the key to, to, to figuring out this problem is just to realize how many parts do we have to divide 7,245 into? And the answer is obviously seven parts. Then we'll take one part and give it to one child, one part give it to another child, another part give it to another child, and then two of those parts, or one of those parts times two goes to the firstborn child. All right, so very easy. That was the hard part. The rest is easy. All we have to do is take 7,245 and divide it by, divide it by uh, seven. 7,245 divided by 7. How many times does 7 go into 7? It goes one time. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. Bring down the 2. 7 doesn't go into 2 after you brought it down, so we got to put a 0. Then bring down another 4, or uh, another number. How many times does 7 go into 24? It goes in 3 times. 7 times 3 is 21. 24 minus 21 is 3. And we bring down a number as usual. How many times does 7 go into 35? It goes 5 times. 7 times 5 is 35. And the remainder is 0. Now we've got no more numbers over here to bring down, which means we're done. And now we have to interpret, interpret the answer. So 1,000... 1,000... 35, that represents X. So the firstborn is going to get 2 times X. So the firstborn, firstborn, will get 2 times 1,035, whatever that is. And the other children, the other children, I should capitalize that C. The other children will get uh, 
1035. All right. So if you multiply uh, 2 times 1035, Uh, we can set it up here, or you can just do it in your head. That's not really a difficult multiplication problem. Take a thousand, multiply by two, take 35, multiply by two, so on and so forth. But if you set it up like we did in class five or four, whatever, whatever number that was, two times five is 10, carry the one, two times three is six, plus one is seven, two times zero is zero, two times one is two, so there you go. So the firstborn child will get 2,070 silver coins. And the other children, each of, each of the other children will get 1,035 coins. All right. So that's the end of uh, class seven. And... Uh, Let's see here. I'm done with all that. I'm done with all that. And got all that done. Blah 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 blah. All right. So here's your homework. You can go ahead and take a screenshot of that. Excuse me. Screenshot of that, or you can take a screenshot of each page. And as always, I give you the answers. The reason I'm giving you the answers is because I want you to learn. You're not going to learn if you don't have the answers. Some people say you're not going to learn if you do have the answers. They don't know what they're talking about. Trust me. You need the answers. You need to check to make sure you did it correctly. You could spend 100 hours doing the homework incorrectly, and you just wasted your time. All right? Do the problem. Check your answer. That's the way it's done. All right, so, but be sure to cover, yeah, you know, cover your answers if you if you want. Cover the answers. Uh, it doesn't really matter because again, you have to show your work. And uh, so that's it for class number seven. And uh, remember to uh, title your homework, name, date, uh, course, number each problem, and circle each number. Write your final answer and rectangle it just like I did here, and uh, put your put your uh, homework in your binder, all that type of stuff. Make make sure it's orderly, as I pointed out in the first class. And uh, most importantly, do the homework, do it completely, do it co correctly. There's a lot of it, but don't complain. You've got no choice. Remember. Most of the work in this class is homework. So I'll see you in the next class, and I'll look forward to it.